Welcome to the University of Finley Art and Culture Show. I am Sharenda, your host for today, and excited to introduce Ms. Sarah Sisser, the Executive Director for the Hancock Historical Museum. Welcome to the set. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You are very welcome. We are excited to talk with you. There are a lot of wonderful things happening, and a lot of people don't know what's happening at the Historical Museum. So uh, you have an amazing campus. Thank you. And a lot of times people think when you go to a historical museum, you go into a building, you walk mm -hmm. around, you see some pretty things, and you leave. Right. But that is not what the Hancock Historical Museum is. Right. It's actually a campus. It is. It's a pretty expansive campus. Um, and I think you're right. I think a lot of people think of a historical museum as being uh, a stuffy building full of old things, dusty. Um, and we really aspire to be more of a community resource and more comprehensive. So um, we actually have nine buildings that we're responsible for. We have seven buildings on our main campus, which is located um, in downtown Finley. It's uh, just four blocks off Main on Sandusky Street. And um, we have just a variety of not only buildings and facilities, but also programming throughout the year um, that really appeals to a very wide, um, diverse audience of all ages. Um, so there is something for everybody, and um, we encourage people to come to the museum and to make it their museum, our museum. It's a community resource. Well, and, and the whole focus of it is to celebrate the history of Hancock County right. and its uh, evolution, as right. well as some of the depression and also some of the... Uh, the highs and lows. Yeah, yes. yeah. With, uh, you know, people have talked about the Underground Railroad and they don't realize that we're part of that history of making a difference in people's lives. Yes. And then we have glass factories and so many shiny things yes. and cool <laughs> things. And then you have a farmhouse that was donated and transplanted to the campus. Yes, we do. So when someone's looking at that or a log cabin, they're looking at something that it, it became someone's home yes. hundreds of years ago and is servicing in a new purpose in a new way but celebrating what that look was. Yes and we really have a very rich heritage in our area um, you know not just the city of Finley which of course has the gas boom and that glass production that was a result of the gas boom um, and a lot of uh, you know corporate growth in our area, but also Hancock County, the surrounding county, has a, a very rich heritage, the especially agricultural heritage, yes. right, which we try to uh, shine a light on in our agriculture building, um, but also through some of our programming that's been very popular, um, like the historic barn tour uh, that we which do I every love. other year. Yes, love, it's love, a love. real, it is a very popular <laughs> event. It's fascinating. Um, yes, and we get about a thousand people that do that tour um, every other year, and it has received quite a bit of state recognition as well. It's won two state awards. As it should. Yes. And it's been, um, I think, very successful in preserving, raising awareness about the barns in our area and preserving those mm -hmm. unique resources in our area. So that's a very special event. That's a very special part of our local history. Um, you mentioned the farmhouse that mm -hmm. we have. That is our most recent project. So of those seven buildings on our main campus, uh, the farmhouse, the Davis Homestead, was donated and moved to our campus in 2010. Um, and it is actually the oldest farmhouse in Hancock County. It was built in 1843. And when it was moved to our property, it had to be quartered to be moved across mm -hmm. town. It was located where Birch Haven is now um, on 224, east, east side of town. And then they put it back together at our campus on a new foundation, and it needed a lot of work, a lot a of lot. restoration. Um, so it, it has sat on our campus for several years while we raised the funds and developed a good plan for redeveloping it. Um, well, and I'm glad that you mentioned raising the funds yes. because a lot of times people assume or because they've come from larger communities, they think that there's state funding or national funding right. it, that or grants that could come in and subsidize everything. And Hancock Historical Museum is actually privately, the focus is yes. a private nonprofit that raises funds. So fiscally responsible, you raise funds and then see the progress. Yes, correct? That's, that's absolutely right. And I, I think you're right. That is a little bit of a misconception, especially with Hancock County in our name, mm -hmm. um, that people think we might receive county funding. 
um, or public funding, and that is not the case. We are entirely privately funded. Uh, the museum was founded in 1970 by five very civic-minded uh, local businessmen, and I think they were pretty adamant that it be set up that way, um, and they invested so much time and their own personal resources and personal treasure into uh, making sure that we were a sustainable and viable organization. Um, but going forward, we depend solely on our membership and the community to keep our doors open and to keep programming running. Um, so yes, we are privately funded and we're, and we're pretty proud of that. That is a real outlier in our state um, in terms of historical museums. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's unique to us, but it does mean, it means that we are working hard all the time sure, to raise sure. funds. And, um, this, this project, the Davis uh, Homestead and the adaptive reuse of that house has been a big capital project for us over the last few years. Um, and we're, we're finally at a point where you know, we're looking forward to revealing it to the public. And um, we're not quite finished. We still do need a little bit of funding um, to wrap up that project, but it's in a good place and it's come so far. Oh my goodness, it's just gorgeous. I, I had the honor of walking through it not long after it had been pieced back together. Yes. <laughs> and the, at that point, it was the dreaming stages of yeah. what will this actually be? What will it evolve? And how will it service the community and, right. and meet the mission statement of Hancock Historical right. Museum? And um, oh my goodness, where it's it, it started and where yes. it has grown and what it has flourished into, even with it still needing a few things finalized, yeah. uh, it's so exciting because yes, it's it, it brings again the mission of it being part of the community for service yes. and enjoyment but also many other options with it so uh, you brought along some pictures that yes. we're going to include so yeah. our viewers can be looking at the the timeline of progression yes the from when it first arrived and then how it has slowly progressed wow. into what it is now and oftentimes when we see pictures or we're so spoiled of watching HGTV yes. these days we think that <laughs> we're going to take a it happens in 30 minutes yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and so that's not the case um, no. but tell us about this because sure. it started 2010 and right. then the dreams began and then the work began yeah and it has evolved into what, what now? now yeah, yeah. So in 2010, um, Birch Haven had not been built yet. And so this home, um, the home was built by, let me go way back to 1843. The home was built by David, or excuse me, William and Margaret Davis. Um, and they were really pillars of a very early Finley, pillars of the community. Margaret was um, a midwife. She delivered over 100 babies in that house. And um, they literally blazed the trail that is now 224 from Tiffin to Finley. Um, William served several uh, roles in the community. And their descendants, Davis family descendants, still so many of them in our community, still serve very, very prominent service, roles. Yes. Um, state representative and now state treasurer, Robert Sprague is a descendant of the Davis family through his mother. Um, recently passed away, uh, Judge Allen Davis was mm -hmm. a direct descendant. So, so many wonderful um, citizens of our, of our county who have given back in so many ways. Um, so this house meant a lot to a lot of people. Sure. And when Birch Haven was being developed, the house was really under threat of demolition. Um, and when something like that happens, there's this very brief window of time where people get to decide, are we going to save this? Mm -hmm. And you don't get a lot of time to think about what are we going to do with mm -hmm. it? How are we going to raise mm -hmm. the funds? Um, you either do it or you don't. So that's really what happened. The museum um, was given the building and some funding to um, move the structure um, and, and raised quite a few dollars to move the structure. And we did that in 2010. Wasn't a lot of forethought of how we were going to utilize mm -hmm. it. Um, but that was before my time at the museum, and as the years passed, um, I came on board as some new board members. We started to talk about how we really wanted to utilize that building, mm -hmm. and I think initially the thought might be to turn it back into an 1843 house and to have it be a house museum, um, where essentially people wouldn't be able to touch anything, and sure, it would be sort through. of this moment in time mm -hmm. um, just captured. And we didn't really want that. The more we talked about it, we wanted it to be a community resource that could be utilized um, by the community to serve a modern purpose, but at the same time still really paying homage to the heritage of our area and the history and legacy of the Davis family. So we developed the idea of creating the Davis Learning Institute, mm -hmm. um, which would be a modern resource, which, it, resource, which is a modern resource. Um, and so that's what we've been working towards for the last um, probably four years. 
Uh, we actually started the demolition. We needed to tear down um, old plaster walls mm -hmm. and, and get ready for the interior construction um, in March of 2017. That was a volunteer effort. Myself, my husband, my family, our staff mm -hmm. got uh, down and dirty mm -hmm. and then tore down um, walls and, and did a lot of that work ourselves and then called in the experts and um, ultimately we essentially rebuilt the house within the sh its old the shell. shell yeah yeah and um, so it has all new HVAC plumbing electric um, we had to try to retrofit the oldest house in Hancock County to modern building <laughs> codes which was as you can imagine a real challenge mm -hmm. um, every day really a challenge uh, but we wanted to preserve the historical integrity where we could so it still has the original floors which are beautiful oh, the original gorgeous. windows mm -hmm. um, but the idea is that we will use this house to um, as a space for public programming not just for the museum but for other nonprofits um, that we might be able to foster collaboration with other entities mm -hmm. so the way that we really want to use this house is to be an incubator for collaborations um, between other nonprofits, between uh, community partners, um, that will have this space where those uh, collaborations can be fostered. And um, we will conduct some public programming uh, through the museum in the house, but we also want to open it up to other nonprofits. Um, we will allow private events to be hosted in the house as well. Um, and one really exciting uh, thing that will happen in, in the Institute is that it will be a home for um, a collaborative effort between the, Un the University of Finley and the museum. Um, that is called the Center for uh, Digital Storytelling and Participatory Media, uh, mm -hmm. which is a nice long name for yeah. <laughs> an effort that we have undertaken um, together to record oral histories in our community. So basically making sure we capture a lot of our local history before it's lost. Um, we've talked to a lot of veterans um, of World War II, of Korea, of Vietnam. Um, we've talked to centenarians, you know, people over 100 mm -hmm. years old that have uh, wonderful, vivid memories of earlier Finley. Mm -hmm. um, we talked to a lot of Hancock County farmers. Um, that is an effort that uh, I have worked on with Dr. Christine Deneker here at the university for about five years now um, called Ohio Farm Stories. Uh, Professor uh, Dr. Megan Adams has also been involved with that effort um, where we have recorded the oral histories of century farm owners in our area. So all of those stories have sort of um, led to this larger collaboration to create this center where we will hopefully involve students um, and, uh, and faculty and staff at the museum um, to a really much larger effort to record our local history. And then as we record those stories, they will be archived um, and we hope to then have some public programming that stems from those stories that we've collected. How wonderful. Yeah, so I think in that way, we're um, paying tribute to the history of the house, the history of the family, the legacy of the family, um, but but for a very modern use. And so I'm really excited about the way that's come together. As you should be, and I'm very Thank excited you. about taking advantage of it. Yes. Uh, when I was looking through the pictures, I immediately sent pictures to my supervisor and said, this would be a great place for us to hold a retreat when we're brainstorming oh, yes. and mm -hmm. thinking ahead for the next year, goals, that kind of thing. Where you need to be off campus, but you got to be close enough you can yes. get back. And I'm, I'm guessing there's other nonprofits that they feel the same way. Right. They're going to be more productive if they can leave and feel like they're far away and retreat right. and then be able to get back to where they need to go yeah. or That's, a neutral zone. Absolutely. That's really our hope. Um, and we're furnishing the Institute in that way so that it can be utilized for those purposes. Um, and it does have a full kitchen in it as well, uh, which, which is, is perfect for a day long And it's a retreat. beautiful kitchen it too. Is, yes, yeah. it is. It's lovely. Um, so yeah, that's how we hope that it will be utilized by many different entities. And the nice thing about it is that it still feels like a home. Mm -hmm. So you feel mm -hmm. at home while you're in there. Um, and the few private events that we've had there since it's opened, uh, I had noticed that people really gather in the kitchen much as you would at anybody's home, home mm -hmm. and share ideas. And, and that's what I love to see. That's what we mm -hmm. wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. So that is just one, that's the newest baby to the homeland. Yes. <laughs> to the campus, yes, <laughs> the that's campus. the most recent addition. Yes, and so let's go to something else that has been happening for many years sure. at the main house of the museum. Yes. And that is where you feature uh, a special exhibit that's up for six months at a time, correct? Yes. Yep, usually now, about that long. Um, people are curious sometimes about hours and you close down the month of January but we that do. isn't you on vacation no. 
that is you as an organization right. setting up for your goals and timeline for 2019 yes. or for the new year of people coming in and, and enjoying and exactly. having the opportunity to uh, celebrate. Yes. So tell us what that looks like. What does sure. a January look like for you? Sure. And how do you come up with the ideas every year because there's so much we do yeah we usually have two temporary exhibits as you mentioned that last um, typically about six months um, and then new programming every year new events every year um, and we have a monthly lecture series and a monthly movie night that we have to plan a year in advance as well mm -hmm. so all of that planning usually starts in october mm -hmm. the year before and we kind of get geared up for we're very busy during the holidays with events mm -hmm. um, so we know we have our eye on january as the time when we'll be able to get everything at the museum ready to go for the year ahead um, so right now january is a great time of year for me because it's maybe the only time of year i feel like i'm have all my ducks in a row before <laughs> sort of chaos ensues the sure, rest of the year sure. when we're so busy um, but right now we are preparing those new exhibits that you mentioned um, so when we reopen on february 1st we will have Two new exhibits. Um, the first being an exhibit on Fred Warren, who I know has a person. You have a personal connection to I Fred, do, yes, um, which is lovely. But Fred uh, made violins here in Finley, and so we have some beautiful black and white portraiture that was done um, of him with that art, mm -hmm. um, and it was truly an art form mm -hmm. um, that we are displaying along with some of his tools and one of the violins that he made. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited mm -hmm. about that and being able to tell that story. Um, we also have an exhibit of uh, paintings of Hancock County barns. Again, back to our, our barns. Mm -hmm. um, they're an artist, uh, Ohio artist, who has gone to now over half of the 88 counties in Ohio to paint uh, historic barns. And he approached us last year about painting barns in Hancock County. So he did 13 Hancock County barns. Oh they're my beautiful oil, oil paintings. And they will be on display through September. And then in September, we'll be auctioning them off at the Historic Barn Tour and the proceeds will come to the museum. Oh, how wonderful. Yes, so um, they're lovely paintings. And generous. And very generous, yes. Mm -hmm. The artist's name is uh, Dr. Robert Kroger. Um, and this is called the Ohio Barn Project. It's a retirement project for him. And as I said, he hopes to get to all 88 counties, but he's been to over half already, and he always donates the paintings to a local historical entity. So wow, um, we're, we're what a very gift. happy. Yes. Absolutely. Well, and then for the people to be able to purchase those and have that history with them and yes. celebrating the artist. Yes. And, and this is barn tour year, isn't it? It is, yes. Yeah, because it wasn't last year. So right, I, and people are itching. Uh -huh. um, we, we do get and a lot of comments. And we hope that the weather is as yet. nice yes. as it was two years ago because it was perfect. We are usually pretty lucky. Yeah, I like, I'll regret saying this now, but I usually say God must like the barn tour because <laughs> we, get, we get pretty good weather. Um, so hopefully the same this year, but it's a wonderful event. Rain or shine, it'll be a wonderful event. And um, it's typically six, we don't have the barns confirmed yet for this year, but typically six historic barns. And we do research throughout the year leading mm -hmm. up to it so that we can tell you all about the history of the barn. We have some of the leading timber frame experts in the country that come leading up to the tour and go through the barns and tell us more about how they were built and the history of them. So um, we include all of that information. And then it's just a really great day in the mm -hmm, country. Mm -hmm. um, we have activities at all of the barns. Which is so wonderful. Yes, music at several barns, food, food vendors. You had baby vendors, lambs at one yeah, of them. Animals. Yeah, animals. Um, and so it's really family friendly. A lot of kids come out. Um, and I say you had, early. but those lambs lived in that barn. Yes. We, we invaded their barn and they just yes. happened to be lambs. They were, were newbies. Yes. But that was really Yes, Neat some of the barns are that. still being used. That mm -hmm. I mean, some of the barns they are. have livestock in them. They're still on active farms. Some of the barns um, are just spotless and are almost museums in and of themselves. Mm -hmm. um, they've just pr been preserved that way, and, mm -hmm. and that's great too. But you see a little bit of everything mm -hmm. on the tour. Mm -hmm. So, um, and typically, and it's they great date. for photographers. Oh, absolutely. We see a ton of photographers. So that come many through. neat photos. Yes. Yes, they're gorgeous. Opportunities, yeah. Um, and most of those barns are willing you know, and ready to smile. Yes, because <laughs> the pictures turn out great. I'm sorry. Yes. No. Well, I was just going to say that they're mostly pre-Civil War. Many of them mm -hmm. are, um, and you know, I, I'm not. This isn't my profound quote, but a lot of people talk about barns being sort of the cathedrals of the United States, you know, of our country, and they really are. A lot of the the timber that you see in those barns. Um, that's the last of the virgin forests of this area. Mm -hmm. So those trees mm -hmm. were growing, you know, when people stepped off the Mayflower. Mm -hmm. So that kind of history mm -hmm. is just incredible to me. And I think you can feel that when you and walk in the barn. And it feels like it's still alive. 
because it does. The, of the respect yes. that has been given them over the years. Yes, so. I absolutely agree with you. And each one of those barns tells a very specific story very specific. about the farm mm -hmm. and the family on that farm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, as you can tell, I love barns. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I. I uh, took my mom for her birthday a couple of years ago. That's mm -hmm. what she wanted to do for her birthday, and it fell on her birthday. And I did not have an appreciation for Barnes until that day. Yeah. And boy, did I have an education that I was, I was open to it, but yeah. man, did I fall in love with just the history and yeah. the, the feel, yeah. the personalities. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. That's great to hear because I think that has been across the board. A lot of people feel that way about this event and that's why it's received some state mm -hmm. recognition as mm -hmm. well. Um, so I'm well, and it's very so well organized. That. That's the other part of it, and the artists that are playing music or yeah. are showing off the quilts that they do, they're welcoming. They're you yeah. know, and all of that helps it be a successful day. So, yeah. yes, that's neat. Yeah. Now, uh, the website is just chock full of so many fun yes. things, and and it is true. You have things clear through December of 2019. Yes. But a lot of times you'll see member, non-member. Yes. And so um, I would like to talk about being a non-member, sure. how much access I still have. It's not an exclusive. No. There, there, there is many, or there are many programs there that are free to anyone. That's true. And then with specialty events, there is a discount price if you're paying an annual fee, which right. makes sense. Right. But it's not a club membership. No, not at all. Um, of course, we encourage membership because that's how we keep the doors open. Sure. So, um, membership, there's information about that on the website if people are interested. But no, not at all. It is not exclusive. Um, we welcome anybody and everybody, visitors to Hancock County mm -hmm. as well as residents. Um, and there are, as I mentioned, uh, monthly programs. So we have our monthly lecture series, which takes place on the first Thursday of every month. Um, and it's over the lunch hour. It's a brown bag lecture series. We have Main Street Deli come in and sell lunches there if you'd like to purchase a lunch or bring your own. And it's always a really unique topic, something different every month. And we have a great lineup, and that's all on our website already for the year. And there's no fee to attend that, and you don't have to buy a lunch to attend. You do not have to buy a lunch. There is a, a pre -order. nominal fee um, if you are not a member for that. Okay. It is Okay. three dollars to get in that yeah. day but yeah. you also have then admission to the museum so if you've not been before take Check advantage that day and see all the rest mm -hmm. of the buildings mm -hmm. um, classic movie night is another monthly program that we have and that is typically the third friday uh, of each month always a great movie um, and we have a lot of historical context beforehand so you learn about um, the director of the films, the, the actors and actresses in the films, what was happening in the country at that time and what is sort of um, relevant about that film to contemporary history and current events. And so I always find that really interesting. Typically, I've not seen the movie either, so um, I always enjoy that. That is BYOB. If people, you know, you're welcome to bring a bottle of wine if you like, or we, we provide popcorn and, and pop. and. Um, we have a great following for that as well, and that is free and open to the public every month. Um, starts at seven o'clock, uh, typically again on the on the third Friday. But check our website for mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, we have a monthly uh, discussion group that discusses foreign policy. That is free and open to the public. Um, that is uh, one Sunday a month. Um, so that's another monthly. And program. you have a really cool program coming up for families with children between the. I know the oldest are twelve. Yes. Is it eight and twelve? Where they they get to go out and learn about history under the stars. Well, this is night at the museum. This okay. is really cool. Okay. You actually get to spend the night in the museum. Whoa. Um, I know. So some of the kids get kind of anxious <laughs> yeah. come midnight yeah, when they're in yeah. the museum. Um, but if there are spirits in our museum, they are very benevolent spirits. So <laughs> I think uh, everybody's in, in good shape. But um, well, no, they're, we do this well, they're well taken care of. They are well taken you care take of, care and they of like them. that we're there. So, um, but no, we do. History really sort of comes alive that uh -huh. night, and we let the kids spend the night. Um, so, which is also great for parents. You have reenactments of some of the historical do. characters yeah. that they get to meet. Right. And yes, they sort of come how to life. Fun. It is. It's a lot of fun. They have activities get pizza mm -hmm. um, it's, it's just very a great important night. oh of course you can't do a sleepover without pizza. right right so um, that's always been popular we do that annually and that is coming up in March mm -hmm. and um, let's see this year we're also starting a new event we're doing a we're calling it history with a twist we're doing a craft cocktail competition in May at the mm. museum with some of the best um, mixologists and bartenders uh, in Finley and they are creating 
unique signature cocktails inspired by history, and then we will judge them. And um, will they be dressed in character to match the <laughs> that drinks? That is not a requirement, but although they so might get bonus fun. points if yeah. they do that. So um, we are definitely encouraging creativity. So people can buy tickets to that event, and they will be able to taste all the cocktails. Um, and then we will have judges uh, that also help us to select the winner for this inaugural event. So we're really excited about that. And you have um, Oktoberfest. We have Oktoberfest that we were responsible for, which is in September. That's our largest fundraiser of the year downtown. We really sort of take over downtown Finley for the day. Um, and that is also a celebration of our local heritage, great German heritage in our area, particularly in the southern part of the county, Janeira area. Um, so we'd like to showcase that, highlight that. Uh, live German music, great German food with Schmitz, sausage house, and many others that come from Columbus. Um, we have over 40 varieties of German import and domestic beers at that festival, so uh, it's a great event. And, and you look for volunteers for that. We need to a help. ton of volunteers. Yes, we need an yes. army of volunteers to pull off that and event. And it's not too early to get connected now. No. Not to at sign all. Up for that. And we need volunteers throughout the year for a lot of our programming. We are a very a very small staff as many nonprofits are, you know, are in the same situation, understaffed. But um, with all the programming we do, especially with children's programming for the schools, we need a lot of volunteer help. Mm -hmm. So if that's something that people are interested in, by all means, um, there are forms on our website that you can complete or give us a call, and we'd be happy to, to connect you. So let's connect them. Your yes. website is? is HancockHistoricalMuseum.org. doesn't get much easier than that. And there is a lot of information on there. Um, pretty easy to navigate. And you do have a map of our campus too, so you can sort of go through and see the buildings prior to coming on campus and see what you'd like to look at. And a phone number if someone would prefer to use the phone? Of course, 419-423-4433. Say it one more time, please. 419-423-4433. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sharinda. And we thank you for tuning in today. We look forward to seeing you the next time. Until then, be well.